What's up guys, it's Tommy here and Liverpool are top of the league. I'm still in such a good mood after Liverpool beat Chelsea and in this video we will share with you guys even more positive news about the contract talks with Virgil van Dijk, Mo Salah and Trent Roxanoud because David Lynch who is a Liverpool based journalist and is well connected with a Liverpool football club. He has sources inside the football club who tell him a great deal about these contract talks and he says that movements are being made on the Liverpool contracts. Uh, first of all, he shared some positive news regarding Ibrahim Konate's contract situation. He said Ibu's contract, if it gets done, is unbelievably good news. You can't underestimate how important Konate is, especially with Van Dijk getting on a little bit. Van Dijk is 33 years old and he's still world class at the peak of his powers. We don't, but we don't know how long that will last. David Lynch continued by pointing out how vital it is to lock down players like Konate and Jero Kwanza already signed a new contract, a new five-year contract, I think. So Konate could be in the next in line. And of course, tying down these players is a lot easier than uh, negotiating con contracts with the big three, as we call it, Van Dijk, Trent and Mo Salah. And David Lynch said that uh, he's optimistic that the uh, Konate contract deal is close to completion and some such a contract would protect his value also, also while safeguarding Liverpool's future in defense. So if ever Konate would be sold or if he, if he wants to leave, Liverpool could get a serious amount of money for him. And David Lynch is confident that Liverpool will extend the contract of Virgil van Dijk and Trent Oxfanoud. He said uh, that um, Trent Oxfanoud in particular is a, in a very strong negotiating position given his profile as a local lad, future captain and he has a key role in the team. He's still only 25 years old, plus world-class clubs like Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Paris Saint-Germain, they are all wanting to sign Trent Oxfanoud. He said the rear spanner in the works on Trent Oxfanoud is whether he decides he wants to go and try playing for Real Madrid, but he maintained that he, the hope that Liverpool will do everything they can to keep hold of Trent Oxfanoud. And regarding the uh, Van Dijk, David Lynch was uh, even more optimistic. He said Van Dijk's desperation to stay is absolutely clear. He's not the top earner, so there's definitely more years of of him playing at this level and Van Dijk is right now on 220k weekly wages and he wants around 300k weekly wages because I, which I think is fair uh, for a world-class defender like Van Dijk he needs to earn absolutely top dollar and Liverpool can more than afford to extend all of these players contracts and it's a lot cheaper to give Van Dijk, Salah and Trent big wage increases and extend their contracts then to lose them on free transfers and replace them which would cost Liverpool around 250 to 300 million pounds in total and that would be a major major squad overhaul that Liverpool I don't think would go down would want to go down that route so David Lynch is very optimistic that because Van Dijk is continuing to perform at a world-class level it seems like a contract extension is not far off most of Salah's future is the toughest decision. David Lynch was more cautious about Salah's potential contract. He said that maybe Liverpool would be reluctant to offer a longer deal given his age and the financial implications, but I think Salah deserves it because in the second part of this video we will look at Mo Salah's record-breaking numbers. He is not just one of the greatest players in Liverpool's history, he's one of the greatest Premier League players in the history of the Premier League. David Lynch said, I really struggle to see a world where Salah gets a three-year contract because that it's too much of a risk. Okay, fine, then just give him a two-year contract extension. I think if you increase Salah's wages to something like 400k and give him a new two-year deal, that would still be, I think, an acceptable contract offer for Mo Salah. And Liverpool don't risk much, because if you lose Salah on a free transfer in two years because he has declined, then fair enough. You still get, you got seven, eight absolutely magnificent years out of Mo Salah. Remember, Liverpool signed him for just 30 something million pounds for, from AS Roma and the rest is history. Salah became one of the greatest players in Liverpool's history and one of the greatest players the Premier League ever, has ever seen and one of the greatest wingers the Premier League has ever seen. He's up there with Thierry Henry and Kun Aguero in my opinion as some of the absolute Premier League greats. 
and Salah should have won three Premier League titles already if it wasn't for the cheating Manchester City, let's remember that. And Salah also indicated his desire to stay, so I think Liverpool should get all three of these contracts done. David Lynch emphasized the challenges Liverpool face in agreeing to terms that work for both parties. He said, I think two years will be the upper limit of uh, what Liverpool will offer to Mo Salah, highlighting the balancing act between protecting Liverpool's financial stability and retaining a player of Salah's Caliber, caliber but I don't I don't buy this that if you if Liverpool offer a three-year contract to Salah and let's say he declines after a year and you are stuck with him you can always sell him to Saudi Arabia for uh, big money even if uh, he has another two years left on his contract because Saudi Arabia would match his wages so it's not a problem in, in, in the most Salah's case even if you give him a big contract on three-year contract with big wages it's not a problem of uh, you know you can't sell the player because nobody is prepared to pay his salary. Salah is an exception. Salah is an absolute icon in the Middle East and the Saudi Arabian League would absolutely love to have him and they, they would pay even more of a, a contract, even a bigger wage than what Liverpool would offer Mo Salah. So I don't get that offering Salah a freer contract is a big like risk to Liverpool's financial stability. I don't know where that is coming from. Liverpool as a football club make more than 600 million pounds a year. Surely you can generate enough money to afford Salah's wages. And it's a little bit of a wage increase, I think. Salah is not asking for 700 or 800 thousand pounds per week. By the way, that's what Erling Haaland is on, apparently. So Liverpool can increase Salah's wages. It costs a little bit more than his current wage, yes, but you keep and honor an absolute all-time great Liverpool player. He's up there with Steven Gerrard, Kenny Dalglish as one of the best Liverpool players to ever play for the football club, in my opinion. And David Lynch summarized, hopefully we hear some news on Trent Oxfano's contract extension and Virgil van Dijk's contract extension and uh, maybe Mo Salah is the last domino to fall because Salah's contract is the most complicated because he's on the biggest wages and he would want even higher wages and also he would want a freer contract which maybe Liverpool don't give him that but I really hope uh, that the fact that all three of them, Trent, Van Dijk and Salah wants to stay and the fact that Liverpool has started the season in absolutely brilliant fashion. I mean, to only lose one game out of 11 and win 10 of the first 11 games of Arne Slot's uh, Liverpool tenure, this is nothing short of a spectacular start by Liverpool. It's only a good start, but it's, it's, a, it's a great start. It's an almost perfect start, in fact. And if does, this doesn't convince Salah, Trent and Van Dijk that Liverpool is the club to stay at, then I don't know what will. Because Liverpool are bang in the title race. In fact, we are top of the league. And yes, we have some bigger tests coming up. Leipzig away is going to be a tough game. Arsenal away is our, one of the hardest games of the season. But with Saliba suspended, Liverpool have a good chance of getting a result there. So hopefully Liverpool can get all of these contracts done. Reliable journalist Paul Joyce also indicated that talks with all the big free players are we have reached an impasse but he reported this few weeks ago like three or four weeks ago and david lynch said i think it was perceived negatively that the word impasse was used but i still think there's a positive to be taken there. We know probably four or five years ago the talks hadn't even started, particularly with Zala and Van Dijk. That had moved nowhere. Now we are at somewhere where we are saying it's a, at an impasse. But that back and forth negotiation is going on. So that's, yes, that's a positive that Liverpool started the negotiations because four or five weeks ago it wasn't the case. I think it's massively encouraging and suggests that movements are being made towards keeping them. Because yes, the fear was Liverpool wouldn't offer even Salah a, contra a new contract. That was the biggest fear of Liverpool fans. Sorry, my eye was twitching. So I think Liverpool offering all three of them new contracts. It starts the negotiations, it starts the ball rolling, and then we just need to figure out the details. And given how instrumental and how absolutely legendary all three of these players have been for Liverpool throughout the recent years, I think lo losing even one of them would be a huge blow to Arne Slot's new look Liverpool. Losing all three of them on free transfers is an absolute nightmare scenario. It would absolutely collapse uh, Liverpool as, um, as a title contender in my opinion. 
that would be like Man City losing Haaland, Kevin De Bruyne, maybe Ruben Dias, their centre back, or or they them losing Haaland, Rodri and Ruben Dias. That's that's I think an equivalent. So I really really hope that Liverpool can get the all of these contracts done. And David Lynch said that wage wise, uh, it will be a very interesting what uh, these players will ask for. And but the bottom line is. David Lynch is hearing that Van, Van Dijk is very eager to sign a new contract. He said on Van Dijk, I really do have confidence in that one. He's so, so keen to stay. He wants to stay at Liverpool. And Liverpool can see the value in keeping him. He's not in Mohamed Salah's wage structure fee, so it's a lot easier to keep him because Van Dijk is earning £220,000 per week right now, with still, which is still a very high salary. But Liverpool can bump that up to maybe £300,000 per week and Van Dijk would be happy with that, in my opinion. And also his family is happy in Liverpool, he is happy with, in Liverpool, Liverpool are doing great, we are title contenders in Arnold's first season, which is an absolutely ma magnificent thing. And also Van Dijk is still looking as imperious as ever, he's 33 years old, he can still play for two or three years at a very high level at Liverpool. He has won the most aerial duels out of all Premier League players and his defensive stats of 5.4 clearances. 0.6 tackles and 2.4 interceptions per 90 minutes are highly impressive. But also his leadership skills, his ability to organize Liverpool's defense is not bettered by anyone in world football. So he's a big, big reason why Liverpool became successful. Remember, after Van Dijk signed in January of 2019, Liverpool straight away qualified for their first Champions League final since 2007. And the rest is history. Since then we have been to three Champions League finals. We should have won three Premier League titles. I mean, in my eyes, Liverpool were good enough to win three Premier League titles. And if it wasn't for Man City's cheating, we would have won three Premier League titles. And the most important thing is he's not showing any signs of slowing down and his wages aren't like astronomical. Liverpool can more than afford Van Dijk's wages. And now let's talk about the legendary Mo Salah. And this is why I want to emphasize how important it is to keep Mo Salah. Because Mo Salah became number six in the chart which ranks the most goal contributions for one Premier League club. And Mo Salah is now ahead of even Steven Gerrard. He has 160 goals and 72 assists in two for this, so that's 232 goal contributions. And even this season, he can catch up to Harry Kane, in my opinion, if he gets 20 more goal contributions in the rest of the games. And if he stays for another two or three seasons, he could catch even Wayne Rooney, who is uh, just uh, like 44 goal contributions ahead of him. Which is uh, like a two seasons for Mo Salah on average, you know. But what is also absolutely incredible and mind-blowing about Mo Salah is that he is the big game player. With all capital letters, the biggest big game player you have ever seen in the Premier League. Because against the big six, the really big clubs, Against Man United, Mo Salah has 12 goals and 6 assists. Against Arsenal, 10 goals, 2 assists. Against Tottenham, 9 goals, 2 assists. Against Manchester City, an incredibly strong Man City, 7 goals and 4 assists. So that's 11 goal contributions against arguably the best Premier League team uh, that has ever been. And Chelsea, 5 goals and 3 assists, so 60 goal contributions and counting against the other top 6 clubs. And also, he is now in the top 10 all-time leading goal scorers in Premier League history. For a £30 million tra transfer, that's an absolutely mind-blowing number. 162 Premier League goals. I don't think he's catching Alan, Sh Alan Shearer, he would need to score 98 more goals. But he can maybe catch Harry Kane if he stays for another two or three seasons. But definitely Andy Cole, who is ahead by 25 goals. So Salah would need to score 25 goals in the next, like this season and next season. I think that's doable in total. I don't think Salah can score 25 goals 
goals this season 25 more goals but maybe if Salah stays for another two years he can do that and I, I'm really I absolutely love Mo Salah I think he's one of the best players that Liverpool fans have ever seen I've watched Steven Gerrard growing up in my eyes Mo Salah is up there with Gerrard I haven't seen Kenny Dalglish or Ian Rush play uh, live I mean uh, but uh, I have seen Steven Gerrard and Mo Salah is up there for how important he is to Liverpool Football Club. Also, Ryan Gravenbeck throughout the league season, even though some Chelsea fans are, cl are claiming that Moises Caicedo pocketed Gravenbeck, he dominated the Liverpool midfield and Chelsea fans are popping up on social media, even though they lost again to Liverpool after battering, getting battered 4-1 last season. They lost 2-1 this season to Etanfield. But they are giving it the big one the, with Moises Caicedo apparently being better than Gravenbeck. Well, let me show you. The numbers uh, don't lie. Gravenbeck has more long passes completed, better long pass accuracy, more forward passes made, better aerial dual success rate percentage, better ground dual success rate percentage, met more interceptions, more recoveries per 90 minutes than Moises Caicedo. I mean, in the f after the first seven games, let me stress it like that, this graphic was made after the first seven games, but still, it shows that in all but two metrics, Ryan Gravenbeck is better than Moises Caicedo. And remember, Gravenbeck's numbers should be a third of Caicedo's numbers, because Gravenbeck cost 30 million, Caicedo cost 120 million, or close to that. Moises Caicedo, he has been a good signing for Chelsea this season. He shows his true self last season. He was a disaster just like the whole of Chelsea until the last like 10 or 12 games. This season Chelsea is really clicking and they have like 40 players so they should be clicking after the three seasons of spending a one and a half billion pounds but even though I don't think Chelsea are true title contenders, but maybe next season they will be. And if, Ch if Man City get kicked out of the Premier League and get relegated, then I want to see a Liverpool-Arsenal-Chelsea three-way title race, because that would be very, very exciting as well. I don't think Man United or Tottenham can get there, but we shall wait and see. That's for the future. And I'm just happy that uh, Liverpool are top of the league. Long may it continue. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.